All right then, gang. So just like in regular JavaScript, we can use TypeScript to interact with the DOM to query elements, update our HTML, react to events like button clicks or form submits, etc. Now, before we dive into that, I just want to explain one thing. I've deleted the sandbox.ts file right here, and I've replaced that with an app.ts file because we're going to start to create the code now for this app. And I've also had that compiled, even though it's empty at the minute, to app.js down here. And inside the index file, I've linked to that app.js file. So that's all I've done so far. So then, for the most part, when we work with the DOM in TypeScript, it is the same as when we work with the DOM in JavaScript. We can still use the same query methods and event listeners, etc., and we can still access all of the same properties on the DOM elements, but there are a few key differences to be aware of. So first of all, let's just dive right into an example. I'm going to say const anchor is equal to documents.querySelector, just like we would in JavaScript, and that is going to grab an anchor tag. Okay, so that's exactly the same so far as we would do in JavaScript. And inside our HTML, we have an anchor tag right at the bottom in the footer right here. So we should grab that. That's the only one on the page. Now then, watch this. If I come down here and say console.log and I want to log the anchor tag out and save this, then over here we can see that we have the anchor tag. But if I try now to access a property of it, such as href, which we can do, we get some kind of error. Now, why is that? Well, if we hover over this, it says that this object is possibly null. So it's saying, well, this right here might actually be null. And the reason it's saying that is because TypeScript doesn't actually know whether there is an anchor tag in the index page during development. It doesn't have some kind of special access to the index page to be able to find that out. So it's just warning us here that, look, this could be null. And if this is null, then you're not going to get an href property on it. So we can combat this in one of two different ways. First of all, we could do some kind of runtime check. We could say if anchor, and if that is true, it means it's not null, then we can log this out to the console, and that's going to take away the error, and then this will work, right? Or the other way, if I log that out, let me just paste that down here again. Currently, we get the error. If we are certain as developers that this thing exists inside our HTML file, what we can do is add on an exclamation mark to the end of that query selector and now that error goes and that is us as developers saying look I know that this is going to return some kind of value an anchor tag and not null I know that for definite so you don't need to give me this error down here so now it knows that this is actually going to be an HTML element and we can access this property on it now another cool thing about using TypeScript for DOM interaction is that it automatically contains special types for every DOM element. So if I hover over this, we can see that const anchor is an HTML anchor element. That is the special type of this variable. This means that when we use the anchor variable, TypeScript knows all of the different properties and methods on that type and it's going to make them available to us in some kind of IntelliSense. So if I say anchor dot, it knows it's an anchor tag. And so we can use all of these different methods or properties on that that are available to an anchor tag, which is nice. OK, so let's move on to another example. I'm going to now try and grab this form right here. So it's a form tag, but it also has a class of new item form. So let me just comment out all that jazz first of all. And then what I'm going to do is say const form is equal to document.query selector. And we want the form tag. Now, again, I could say exclamation mark to say, look, I know this exists. And when I do that and hover over it, I can see that this now has a type of HTML form element. Now, this is fine, but what if I had several different forms on one page? Well, we couldn't be certain that this gets the right form on the page there. So we could use a class instead. So if I comment this out, what I could do instead is say const form is instead equal to documents.query selector. And I think it's called the new item form. We want this class right here. Let me copy that dude 
and paste it right here like so and it's going to still grab that same thing but even if I add an exclamation mark over here, when I hover over this now, it's gonna say that this is of type element and not the HTML form element. So why is that? Well, it's because when we use form or anchor tag, TypeScript knows what tag we're grabbing. Now, in this case, we're just passing a class and a class could be applied to any different element in the HTML page. So it doesn't know that it's a form, it just knows that it's gonna be some kind of element. So how do we combat this? Well, we can use something known as typecasting to say what this is going to be, what type of element this is going to be. We can cast it to be a certain type. And the way we do that is by saying as, and by the way, we take off our exclamation mark when we use as, because if we say as, it's never going to be null. It's always going to be of a certain type that we cast it to. So I could say as, and then it's going to be HTML, form element okay so now when it grabs this instead of storing it as element type it uses this type instead html form elements and if i hover over that now i can see that so therefore we get all of the right properties and methods available to us in some form of intellisense inside vs code which is nice okay so now i could say something like console.log and i'm going to get the form i could say dot to get all of the different properties and methods available to us and i could choose one of these if i go to the top i'm just going to choose something like children if i can find it there it is okay cool save it oops there we go and we should see all of those right here an html collection with these different fields awesome that's all of the children of the form okay so let's try then grabbing the different input fields inside that form so i could say inputs and then down here i'm going to say const type and i'm saying const type because it's this field i'm grabbing first of all and i don't just want the fields i want the actual inputs themselves so i'm going to say that const type is equal to document dot query selector and then I can't say input because I don't know which import I'm going to get then. Instead, I want to go over here and use the different IDs that I've given to these different form fields. So this first one right here has an ID of type. So we'll say hash type to grab the ID. Now, again, if I hover over this, it just says it's going to be elements or null. It says or null because we've not done the exclamation mark. Now it's just elements, but I can typecast this. And I could say as HTML select element, okay? Because this is a select field right here. Awesome. So now I want to get the second one, and that is going to be, in fact, what we'll do is just duplicate this. And this time it's not going to be type, it's going to be to from. This is going to be this thing right here, this input. So I'm going to grab the ID to from and paste it right here. This time it's not. A select element it's an HTML input element okay and that's this thing right here so we can do the same for the other two so I'm gonna go down again and this time it's gonna be details so let me copy that and paste it over here and over here as well and that is also an input element and the third one if I go down is gonna be called amount and the ID of that you'll just have to trust me is amount and that is also an input field okay so this is still input elements awesome so now we have access to all of those input fields why don't we now try adding an event listener to the form so that when a user submits the form we can access these different fields and maybe log them to the console so let's do that i'm going to comment out this log up here first of all then down here i'm going to grab the form which we have stored right here and I'm going to say add event listener. It's going to be a submit event. And then I'm going to fire a callback function when this occurs. This is going to take in a parameter E, which is of type event built into TypeScript. It's an event object. And then inside this function, I want to first of all say e.prevents default. That prevents the page refreshing, the default behavior when we submit a form. And then down here, I'm going to console dot log all the different values so first of all type dot value 
that's this thing right here and dot value just gets us the value that is currently inside the select or the input field so type dot value first of all then to from dot value then we want details dot value and then finally we want amount dot value as well okay so let's see if this works come over here so we'll change this to payments we'll say yoshi and we'll say website work and then the amount is going to be 200 add let's see if this works we see payment yoshi website work and 200. now ideally in the future i want this to be a number but by default even though this is a number right here that we're inputting javascript turns that into a string version of the number now what we could do to combat this is say instead of just value value as number and then it turns this into a number for us so if i do this again just put any old junk in here and then do an amount of 400 add this is now a number and we can see that because it's blue in the console and when we say blue number in the console it means it's of number type and not a string cool so there we go my friends that is the crux of interacting with the dom in typescript we'll build on this later but for now i want to move on to something else classes